Hey, good people. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me here at Just Say No to Narcs. If you are new to this channel, welcome to this loving community. As always, I hope that I share something helpful for each and every one of you beautiful souls. Today, I want to talk about whether or not you should warn the new supply. I know in uh, maybe a video or two way back when I have said that, no, don't warn them. Let them find out for themselves. But the farther along I get in healing and helping people and talking to people, I would like to add to that. So I do say, not necessarily, you know, you need to weigh your options, but it's important that if you know someone is going to destroy another person's life and that person is good as far as you can see, I, I'm all for you saying something to them. But you got to be careful in how you do it. So there's the really toxic new person who I say, stay away from them. Um, they're already doing stuff against you before you even know who they are. And that was my situation as leaving and seeing a new person come into place. A person who was willing to, um, you know, email my boss, smear my name, say things about me. And I had never met, I'd never done anything to this person. Those kinds of people do not waste your breath. Now, you can pray for them if you like, because God says pray for your enemies, you know. But, it, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that right there because God is still working with me in that area. Now, the person, when you see a new person who is seems to be a pretty good person, they're not, you know, worried about getting involved and smearing and all of that. And they're just kind of, you know, a little indifferent. And you have a window of opportunity to speak to them, send them a message or something. Why not? Now, you definitely want to use caution. Um, if you have children with them, you want to use wisdom. So the most important thing to do is to pray to God and ask that God would give you the words to say if he wants you to say something. But to be a willing vessel, an open heart to share with someone else the danger that they're entering um, I think is a very honorable thing to do um, because you could save a life. Um, narcissists destroy lives. Look at how long it takes so many of us to put our lives back together just from spending such little time with them. Some of us, a lot of time with them. And it takes, it takes, seems like forever to rebuild and to put yourself back together. You don't want to want that to happen to someone else. It's the pain is excruciating. The battle is heavy. And so, um, you know, if, if you can warn someone and help them get out, I say, do it. I, I have spoken to several people who did just that. And the new person was like, oh, I'm glad you said something. Cause I noticed something was off and they were like, peace out. You know, or um, that person that I spoke to was actually a person worn by an old supply. And um, that was why they left. And a lot of those are the early on situations. If the new supply is or the old supply is willing to step up and say something um, and, you know, no matter what, then that could help out the new supply. And I want to tell you, in my situation, the old supply was really demanding and I had seen some questionable things and behaviors and stuff from her, you know, hearing her on the phone and things like that, um, that were concerning for me and some, you know, some financial issues and some neediness with the ex sociopath that kind of made me question her when she wanted to reach out to me initially. So I just blocked her. I didn't even listen to her. I don't know what she wanted to say at that time. Um, and that was just because of her behavior. She was demanding and aggressive about me talking to her and just keeping up a lot of commotion. So if you're going to reach out, you can't be like that. If you want the person to be open to hear you, you need to be on your best behavior. Um, and so that means not going back and forth with the narcissist, not pointing fingers at that person, making it like they're the ones that ruin the lives and the relationship because that person didn't know anything about you other than that you, you know, whatever terrible things the narcissist shared. But it doesn't mean that they believe it because I didn't believe what the ex-sociopath shared with me about her even after seeing some of the things that I had seen within her for myself. I still didn't take 
I can't even remember all of the specific things he said about her. That's how much I didn't, you know, take it to heart because I always know there's two sides to a story. But it was her behavior that turned me off from listening to her. If she wasn't aggressive, I would have listened to her early on and I probably wouldn't have lasted any time in that relationship. I would have walked away knowing what she shared with me, you know, over a year later. So a year later, um, he had actually finally found the button to push to get me to reach out to her because I had absolutely refused before. I always took up for her because she was the mother. She's the mother of his children. So I said, no matter what you think about her, you, you thought highly enough of her to lay down and have two children with her. So I don't want to hear it. And that was always what I would say to him. But when he showed me a message of sexting, that was what sent me on my <laughs> road of reaching out to her. Well, when I reached out to her and asked her, I was so nice about it, y'all, too. Um, even though she turned out to be kind of dirty, you know, I asked her nicely, you know, could you respect our relationship and not do things like that? You know, I understand that you might be in pain, but, you know, I'm just like, you know, what? Stop. This is over a year. And, you know, I didn't know it was narcissistic abuse then or anything and that he had been telling her they could get back together if she get her finances together and all that. I, I didn't know that then. So um, when I reached out to her, she just let, she told me everything, you know, how he wasn't doing this with the kids and that with the kids and all this stuff that he had been lying about that I knew and this patterns of behavior she shared with me that I had seen and I had questioned, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. But her being willing still at that point to say something, it helped to turn the light bulb on for me. And it wasn't long after that, that I, you know, gathered myself and especially after he had done some horrible things to me, um, you know, within a very short time frame from her sharing that with me, I decided that I didn't need to be in this relationship. This is not a loving relationship. This is, these are patterns. He did the same thing with her and he was worse with me. It seemed like early on. And so it was a, you know, it was going to be a no go anymore. Anyway, there's no way I could let those things out of my head that she had shared with me on top of that. He had shared some very personal information about me with her and things that I shared with him. He shared with her and she went ahead and told me and, oh, it was just, it was a wash at that point for him. And so reaching out to the new supply can help that person. I might have still been in that relationship had she not said anything to me. Um, and again, like I said, she ain't the cleanest person. And I mean by behavior and heart, but what she said and shared wasn't false. It was helpful. It was a pattern of behavior and I had seen it for myself. And so um, I, I, I'm grateful for that um, information. Uh, and that new person will be grateful for you to share if they are not toxic people. Um, now you can expect for them to either respond to you in a kind way and say, Oh, thank you. I needed to know that I'm out. Oh my gosh. Da, 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 I'm gone. Or they could give you just a slight kickback. Like with her, I was like, you know, well, God bless you. You know, I don't know what you're talking about. I did. I knew exactly what she was talking about, but I was just, uh, you know, it was overwhelming emotionally to realize that y you had been stupid for so long. <laughs> and so to try and figure out how to not be stupid anymore. And so that's why I kind of, I didn't give her any, uh, it was just a God bless you kind of thing at the end. And, um, but the seed was planted and I could not unsee what I was seeing. And so that could help the new person, but they could not respond to you immediately. I did go back um, and let her know later that, yeah, he did the same things. Thank you for sharing with me. Because if you hadn't, you know, I wouldn't have known. And um, I just want you to know he didn't treat me any better. If that's what you thought, he was doing the same things that you mentioned to me. And um, so, um, but again, she turned out to be dirty. So please don't do them dirty. If you're going to help the new person, don't do dirty stuff to them. Don't, you know, come and stab them in the back and, um, you know, show her thing was she showed up to court 
with him for a restraining order because he had promised to get back with her. And so she went ahead and changed the whole deal up and so um, decided to go to court. So, you know, it's really nasty stuff. And so that kind of thing that people are leery about, um, you know, it really her motives. Make sure your motive or motives are right. Her motive wasn't really to tell me um, about him so I could leave and she could save someone. That wasn't her motive. Her motive was, was to tell me so that I can leave and she could get back with him. But she, little did she know he had already had somebody else he was working on. So he got her to do what he needed her to do. Then he moved that new person in right away. And so, you know, you just got to be careful with your motives. If you are, you doing it to be dirty to the new person, then be careful because that could have um, some consequences for you. Um, and, you know, that had to be devastating for her to think that she had the victory. She won and got me out and then was helping him to do a smear against me and lie on me. And then it all, you know, the bottom fell out for her um, when that new person showed up. So anyway, for what it's worth, that's my two cents. Um, I think the new supply could benefit from a warning if they are non-toxic. Um, but it's between you and God about how that happens. It is important to use wisdom and it is important to not have a motive of trying to get back with the narcissist or a motive of ruining the narcissist's life or ruining that person's life or getting back at that person for coming with the narcissist, ending up with the narcissist because it's not their fault. So just be careful in why you're doing it. And I think it's okay. Somebody's got to tell somebody. We can't continue to let narcissists rack up bodies and not talk. So I'm always going to talk. So whoever happens to listen, I mean, hopefully, I'm sure that I, I may not be used in tri triangulation anymore because I'm a talker. So when you become a talker, they're not going to be using you to triangulate too much because that other person will just look over at what you got to say and, and move on. And so, you know, you, je you threaten the narcissist supply. And that's okay. I'm all for that. God bless you. Take good care of yourselves. Please let me know in the comments below about your experience. Were you warned? Did you warn someone? How did it turn out? Um, again, be careful of the toxic people. Do not waste your breath or your energy trying to warn those beasts. They are similar to the narcissist and they will join forces with the narcissist to, kind of, to come and try and take you down. Um, so just be careful. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear your stories. Um, and I'll be waiting for the comments below. God bless you. Take good care of yourselves and take care of the people who love you. Goodbye.